morning everybody it's lovely to see you all out there again and I hope you're all okay out there um, and I just thought I'd share with you today now I'm trying something a little bit different today so if you can hear me I really do need you to say yes we can hear you because I am trying something different so if someone could just go yes we can hear you Francine that would be really cool I'm trying a different Thing that this man talked me into and I don't know if it works or not so to try and make my videos clearer so can you hear me okay out there yes awesome that's what I needed to know I am trying something different well today I was going to do a design using the aloe spikes but because of the, all this rain we're having they're really too turgid and they're just so full of water that I decided I needed to pick them and let them dry and I'll talk to you about that a little bit sooner but hi everyone lovely to see you this morning um, and so what I'm going to do is I decided as I was walking around the garden uh, looking at you know, picking the aloe spikes I decided that oh I found something else on the ground we've had some very strong winds here and some quite heavy rain so I found some big branches off my tree covered in lichen and I thought I'm going to do that instead today uh, and I will show you how to prepare your aloe spikes for the design that we're going to be doing next week and I may even do that on Tuesday because I have another concept for Thursday so lovely to see you also now in Ireland and England New Zealand and Australia and Pakistan and it's just lovely that we all our flower friends we can all come together even if it's just for a short time so what I've got here is I've got these lovely lovely lichen branches just they're just really covered in it this is off an old tree that we've got so when the wind blows it, it cracks them and they fall down which is to my benefit <laughs> you know hunter gatherer type person um but then what i've done here is i've got people are saying francine about that i'm using pliers and they're quite hard these are what they call ratchet um pliers because what they do is when you actually go in and you click them you hear it click and then you cut it again and it just is so easy on your hands so if you want a good set of um, ratchet pliers, do try it. You find them in the most of the garden centres now. They have them, and it's easier on your hands when you're doing that. So I've got my lichen branches here, and I'm just going to sort them into size because I've pre-made something that I want to be able to use. Uh, some of these are so fragile I can do that. Some I can't, so I'll use my pliers on there. Yes, they talked me into getting one of these little mic pieces, and they said it would work better. So I hope it's not getting all those sounds like we had before. So if it cuts out, let me know. I might have gone flat and I'm not talking about me. Well, maybe I am talking about me, but anyway, I'm going good. So I've got all my sticks and I'm working them into the sizes that I want. And you can use anything with texture. So with this design, I'm going to be talking about textural contrasts, um, really, because this is a really good example of looking for textures. Now, if you haven't got lichen branches, you can do this with anything, really. But I wanted something quite thick that was quite patterned on the outside. Um, so then I'm going to get my paper coat of wire. This is the Oasis one. I like this one. It's nice and easy to manipulate. And I'm going to cut two lengths. So this one, and I fold it over. So I've gone, and then I fold it over so I can get two. It's a double end with a end on it there where I've pulled it so coming out about that length turn it over and then take it back down the other side so two lengths now if you're doing a really big uh, design you might want to do three four five of these ties but I'm only going to do two so and then I've worked out I've got a little vase here or a little jar I thought we're going to think about things that are easy for people to get so I've got just a jar from my coffee <laughs> and I'm going to work out how high I need that so I'll bring this over so that you can see how high I'm going to need to tie so I'm going to put one tie there. So you take your loop and you twist it. And you go round it twice. Make it nice and tight up to the timber or to the stick. Um, then I'm going to do the same on this one. Take another one down here and do another tie there. So I've got my two ties. And this is, you know, at the sushi mats. This is how, kind of how they make them in mats and things. So I've got my two ties like this. If you can see that I'll step out of the way you've got my two ties so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work out where the bottom is going to be here and I'm just going to again sit it next to the other one and I'm going to double tie it double twist it I mean so I'm going around and I'm just going to twist it twice and whenever you do this make sure you do the same amount of twists every time another one here you can do this on the table. It might make it easier for me actually. 
So can you see that down there? So I've got my twists. Lay your, and it's an easy way to do it if you do lay it out like this. Then you can slot them in, in between the gaps, in between the wires. And then you can get a really good tension on and twist them. And this is a really good technique to use and to learn um, and to practice with. And it just holds all your sticks together. And I use this concept for many different things. It's just never ending the options with this one. Another one around here. So are you all good today? I hope so. Let's do this one around here. I can't believe it was a year ago that I was over in England with my sister Christine. It was just amazing. We had an amazing trip. So see how they're joining together and it holds all our sticks together? Oh, hello in the USA. It's lovely to see you too in Connecticut. So then I'm going to do this here and I'm going to do another one, but I'm making sure that they're all the same at the bottom because I want this to sit flush on the ground. But you might decide that you want it to be suspended halfway up the container. So then you can offset the sticks and have some up, some down. So the options for this are never ending. So again, just do this around here. Now there are a lot of people that know how to do this, but we do have a lot of new people that are looking at joining floral art groups um, and look into floristry as well. So, you know, we've got to remember that when we've got new people that are wanting to join in with us that they haven't seen some of these things before. So, and if we have, well then it's a refresher. <laughs> <laughs> you never stop learning and you never stop practicing. I think if you if you say, oh, well, I've learned everything, it's time to find another hobby because with floral art and floristry and our, our art form, it's just ongoing. And I, that's why I love it so much. You're always learning something new. Oh, hello to you in Blythmouth. Is it Blindmouth? Oh, it's lovely to see you all this morning in Ireland. Um, so I'm just, now what I'm doing is I'm making sure I'm graduating it down because of what I'm doing. So I've got the different sizes coming down, but you might want to have them up and down. Um, you can just do whatever you want to do, but you'll see why I'm doing this in a moment. I thought I'd do this quick run as I was walking around because the um, aloe spikes were just too wet. They're just so full of water. They're what we call turgid, meaning they're retaining a lot of water. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to prepare them for next week's workshop. And Fred might just pop up at some stage. I'm never sure when Fred's popping up, but uh, Fred will be back. He's got a little technique or something he's going to build and show you how to make. Uh, so then I'm just going to finish with this last one that I'm going to do here. So I've got just like that, just like a little. And then the thing is with this, you can roll it up and you've got a neat little design. You can put test tubes in there, but I'm doing something else today. Put this all down here. Save the bits alike and they're always good to have in your... Um, have for designing, sticking on to different frames. I've got one little piece here. I'm thinking I might just try and tie him on. Put that one on there. I'll have to bring that wire down so he can tie him on. That's better. So another little piece on the end there. So now what I did is I've got, I'll bring up my, my turn table. So I've got my turntable here and I've got my jar but I thought oh I needed to put it on something so I've got just like a mirror tile but you can use any dish or anything that you've got at home. I'm going to put my mirror tile in the middle. I put my vase in the middle and I've pre-done one here because I thought you didn't want to watch me do a whole lot so I've got quite a nice long one here. Really neat. These look really cool for doing panels as well. So doing really interesting panels and putting test tubes on and you can hang them but it's just a technique that you can just keep adding to. So then what I thought I'd do is I'm going to tie this one onto this one. Probably should have done that before I put the turn table on, but you know me. <laughs> I'll just uh, get this one and I'm going to tie that on with the, with the over bits of wire that I've got. And then I'm going to come in and tie this. So you can join them as well. And if you're doing an exercise as a group and you want to do a technique like this and you think, I want to make these huge big ones, Get everyone to do a panel and then you can join the panel. So it makes it quite a fun one. So now I've got a really long panel here. Might just need to, because of the weight of this, these are wet. I'm going to then wrap it around my vase. Or my jar, whatever I've got. I'm going to wrap it right around there. And have a nice textural contrast rhythm. And there, I didn't want to make the ends here nice and smooth. I wanted to add another texture up in here. And also the colours from the ends coming through. So I'm going to make sure that's nice and tight around my jar, wrap it around there, and then I'm going to tie that onto this branch here, 
one of the branches that's nice and close that it's going to make it nice and firm. So I'll tie that, pull that one down, tie it on, and twist it, make it nice and firm. But there's other things as you're doing this and you're rolling it, you might want to roll test tubes into it. Um, if you want to keep it uh, sustainable, environmentally friendly, you can use bamboos uh, and use them like little test tubes and tie them in. So now that I've got that tied on there, I'll just turn that around, just straighten it up a little bit, make sure I'm happy with the way it's sitting. So I've got that on there. Isn't that texture just incredible? I thought this is a very good example of texture. Then what I thought I'd do is, as I was walking around the garden, believe it or not, I've got daffodils out everywhere. Trouble is my daffodils were all blown over and broken on the ground, so I've collected them all. So inside this jar, I'm just going to put some water. And this is where it's a really good example of textual contrast and how luminous the um, daffodils are. <laughs> nice sound of warming water, isn't it? Uh, so then I've got these gorgeous daffodils. So all I'm going to do is you can either spiral bind them into a bouquet. Just hope these ones aren't too dirty the way we're on the ground. Um, and then I'm just going to do the edge of them here and just put my my daffodils in, but you might have something else you may want to use. It's just that I had these on the ground and I thought I'm going to use them. I don't want them to go to waste. So I'm just going to put them around the edge here like this. And this is the sort of design you can just add whatever's coming out in your garden. And I know people are going to say, but Francine, that container is extremely dominant. It's really sticking out. But I've got these lovely contrasts of the bright yellow um, daffodils that are really, really taking my eye up and through this design. And I'm weaving some of the daffodils. The short ones are coming around the edge at the moment. And then I've got some longer ones. I mean, my daffodils this year are stunning. So I'll just pop these in here. I'm going to cut a whole lot. And I want that one there to go in there. What do you think? Does that cheer your day up? Beautiful daffodils. Nice, simple mechanic. Pop that right in the middle. Like this. I can do the technical mechanics, but sometimes it's nice just doing, showing you a technique and then you can take it wherever you want to take it. If you want to do something slightly different, you can. It's just learning how to do it. So, I'll put some of these ones in to give it a bit of height. So I've got some taller ones here. A few more here. I couldn't believe these were all laying on the ground, sort of with their heads down on the ground, looking so sad. So I thought, I'm going to pick them and I'm going to put them in a container. So, and then I thought, oh, what can I make the container out? Because the aloe spikes were all a bit sad. So I've got these ones here. Pop this one in through there. There you go. Let's turn that around so you can see the lovely daffodils. Aren't they just, oh, they cheer anybody up, don't they? They're just beautiful things. All right. I think I've got one more I can pop in here. Now you could at this stage, if you wanted to, you could put some citrus fruit in there on kebab sticks and have them in through there. And if you're thinking, oh, that's a bit too much texture, you can always do something like this just to break it and put a couple of sticks on here. These are the magnolias that I picked a while ago. And you can put a couple of magnolia sticks in there and branches just to take it through. And I might even just pop a couple of those in through there. And I'll just tie them on and you'll see what I mean. Yep, that's going to go there. Just got to talk to it for a minute. Okay, sunshine, you can go there. And it is a ray of sunshine today. I'll put this one in through here. And just tie that one on just with a little bit, bringing it out even just a little bit, just to give it a little bit of depth as well, so it's not all flat. And I'm going to do the same here. And you can take them round wherever you're working with them. I'll just see if I will want to tie this one. That's the beauty of these, um, using these sticks like this, is you can just tie them and use them as, as a good anchor point for your mechanic. So a few of those in through there. Put that one in there. It needs to go down a little bit. That's it. Don't want it to look like it's sticking out too far. So just a few little branches on there through that. Or another option is if you want to finish the bottom off, you can buy the um, birch bark rolls. You might want to put a little piece of this just around the bottom just to finish it off. So it looks barky, which I thought looked kind of cool, actually. I thought that looked really, really quite interesting, just to settle the eye even more. And it really does bring then repetition from these branches through here to the little bits of timber here to this nice finish that you have at the bottom of your container. So I'm going to leave that one there. 
and to secure that you can use some of the U-glue dashes or double-sided, really strong double-sided tape and that'll secure that in there for you. All right, we'll just pop that in there. Did I put the U-glue dashes there? I think I've got a couple here. I never know, I have them everywhere. No, I haven't got any there, but that shows you just to finish that bit off by putting that little band. And that's just a really simple spring design. I was going to show you one other little thing to do with it if you decided you wanted to do it. You can put a little bit of citrus in here as well. Just pop some citrus fruit in here just to bring that through. And you can slice it, dice it, do whatever you decide you want to do. I'm going to put a bad stick in this one and just poke that into the... Just again doing that. And one more option is, I didn't want to do this because the ground's too wet, is to dig up the uh, daffodil bulbs once they're finished. And you can have the bulb sitting here with all the roots dripping around the outside of the container. So it would really link the whole thing together and really give a nice organic feel to your design. So I hope you enjoyed that really short little video on a workshop on just being able to think about what you can gather around outside branches, uh, stems off different plant material that's nice and strong, you can tatami. But do think about the textual contrast that you can make and putting the what flowers you want to use in here. To give it impact, I just wanted the one variety of flower. I think otherwise if we go too many, it becomes too patterned and it takes your eye away from the texture here. It's showing off that beautiful luminous daffodils, finishing with a bit of bark. I think sometimes simplicity is best. So anyway, that's showing you that one. Now for the workshop I'm going to do next week, I thought I would show you, um, I, like I, we were going to use aloes today, aloe vera spikes, but they're so, so wet. Um, if you can see in there, look at the moisture in them. They really retain a lot of water and we've had a lot of rain. So I've been down, this is one of my big aloes. I've got huge plants of these. This is one tiny, weeny, weeny bit off the plant. I'm going to take some of these to our club actually into area day next week um, so people can help themselves because you would let that dry a bit and then put it in the ground and it keeps growing. And the beauty about cutting them, so what I would do is I get my knife and I go through and I just cut my aloe. They're really easy to cut these ones. You just slice it like butter. Um, and then I'm going to make sure that they're all dead flat. And this, I would suggest you let them dry now. Cut them, let them dry, and we will use them on Tuesday in Tuesday's workshop. I think leave them till Thursday might be a bit long. But leave them till Tuesday. So harvest them, get them ready, and I will show you what we're going to do with them. Uh, but they are rather lovely, but they're just so juicy at the moment. <laughs> it's just a bit hard to work with them. And they're weighted and they're very, very heavy. So I hope you all have a wonderful day out there. Fred's going to be around and he's going to show you how to make a bucket holder and how to transport your designs. If I wanted to transport this, how the best way is to actually transport your designs to your clubs um, or to every events that you're doing. Uh, so we're going to show you how to do that, actually. Um, so I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful day. Take care out there, everybody. Look after yourselves and bye for now.